cooking at UVA. These two, Peter LaSala, Jacob Fopp, know each other really well. Battled year in and year out. That is going to be an awesome matchup to watch at the X, and Syracuse wins the opening draw. Brett Kennedy, who turns 24 years old today, scoops it up and gets it back to Jacob Fopp, who has now taken 331 consecutive face-offs for Syracuse. That's incredible. Those two guys are iron yeah. men. And I was talking to Kyle Fest, a complete lax rat. Like, the game means a ton to him. It is Fopp and LaSala again, and Fopp is two for two for the Orange, but they give it away, and UVA takes advantage. Connor Schellenberger says, look what I found, and we're tied at one. This is crushing for the Orange. Dordovic gets you on the board, and Fop, who's been so tough at the X, grinds out the win, and then just a careless pass. You almost have to ask yourself, like, what he was doing with that, right? What happened? Bobby Gavin, the goalie, was, was about 15 yards away from him behind the cage. So the, the only thing that I could think of was that he just threw a really poor pass. He couldn't have intended to pass to that area. Well, he's doing his job at the block as Syracuse has won all three faceoffs. We're tied at one after Connor Schellenberger's goal. We're going to have some fun watching door to Syracuse fans. Get excited. Griffin Schutz was the number one recruit this year. Joey Spillane is the number one recruit this upcoming year, and he's going to Syracuse. Yeah, the future is bright for Gary Gaten. Another player who's right up there is from Canada, Finn Thompson, who can play attack or midfield. Elite side for 26 in blue. Four different who's had Hatties in that game. Schellenberger, Moore, Cormier, and Schutz. Three different goal scorers today. They lead by two. Fascinating matchup at the Block S today. And Syracuse comes away with the faceoff. Here comes Nick Kakamo, the freshman out of Centerport, New York. It's clicking. That changes the, the whole entire offense for Virginia because you have to play the perimeter. And then the inside for Peyton Cormier opens up. Clark, I heard you earlier this year talking about how he drives at like 300 yes. on the golf course, right? Because those oily hips. Get him out to drumlets. Hit par fours on the drive. How many times did you sneak on that course in college? No comment. And Peel just hammers that. But I think Cade Sastead, his awareness to pick up that loose change, right? Like Nunes makes the save. A veteran starting in place of Mikey Bergman. Making that lineup change. Bert Whistle's not the type of guy that's going to blow by you. He's really good hands and finishing ability. He's a talented dude. Five goals in his last two coming in, including a Hattie at Carolina last time out in that one goal loss for Syracuse. Look at Jacob Bob. No regard for his own body. Petey LaSalle is the same kind of way. He can score. Here comes the faceoff man, and he takes a beating. That happens once again. Yeah, you don't want that if you're Virginia. Petey LaSala is a big-time competitor, but he runs into pressure and contact, and normally I'm okay with that, but not with the upper body injury. And not with game crossbar. That's a wicked shot. Six goals, six different goal scorers for UVA. Bob has been great at the face-off X. Sawa on the deck, 23 in blue. Syracuse comes away with it. Good stick from Grayson Saladay, 32 in blue to knock it away, and Nunes comes up with it. I, I just think people are going to be lining up for the PLL next year to get this guy. There's going to be moves, I think, made to position yourself to have Tucker Dordovic on your team. He's that good. He's coming back. And, and guys like... Jeff Connor, who's a midfielder, going behind the cage. There's Kerwin with the blue and orange hat. Kip Turner in the middle. Turner does an incredible job with the goalies and the face-off game. And Sean Kerwin's a masterful offense. A few weeks with those hands, he can. Give him seven goals now in his last two games and change. Against Cornell, Carolina, and Virginia. Yeah, there's only one ball, right? So, like, Tucker Dordovic's going to want the ball next year. Owen Hiltz is going to want the ball. Joey Spillane is going to want the ball. Pete Nunes near post. That was an impressive shot. 
from Jacob Buttermore, the senior out of Garnet Valley, PA. It's a 6-5 game, three straight goals for the Orange. You gotta credit this team, right? I mean, they're four and eight. The five lost his dome. Here comes UVA. Cormier with those quick hands. Matched up with... Okay, the pressure's gonna come once he passes. Gotta get that shot off quickly. When we did that game, it was the first one after the Richmond game when Matt Moore got hurt. He didn't play against Carolina, and we were wondering who's going to be the second guy in that two QB system with Schellenberger, and it was number four. Jeff Connor did it last year against Georgetown in the quarterfinals. Jeff Connor is a terrific player. I, I think he's one of the most underrated players in all of college lacrosse. Fop got tagged by Saladay. It'll be Syracuse ball. Played attack. His sophomore year was a 40-40 guy. 40 goals, 40 assists. This guy is is a plug-and-play type player in the PLL. I can't wait for the PLL. I always would get depressed at the end of lacrosse season. Like, what am I going to do? I, I missed the game. Now, with the right and his left hand. The Clark, he was doing the mellow. That was the Carmelo Anthony celebration here in Syracuse. Oof. He's got some audacity. Yes. I give him props for, for knowing the history of the Dome and, and the athletes who walk through here, though, right? Do you think he really knows it, or...? The ability to go two hands. That's what separates like the good players from the elite. And Curry and Moore are elite. You had a great conversation with Gary Gate on your podcast a couple years ago. Gary showed up to Syracuse. He's a one-handed player with that box background. Wow, LaSala just got crunched. And Virginia's going to go on the extra man here. Free possession. Yeah, Gary is predominantly a lefty, but... What people don't know, all of their experience using their shoulders and getting underneath defenders. Field lacrosse players, their foundation, they're not groomed that way. They play in space. LaSala wins it cleanly, keeps his footing. Petey LaSala scores! No contact this time. He's the ninth goal scorer for the Cavs in this first half. There's no way they've had a conversation with him. Don't shoot Petey, right? He only knows one way. This is a guy who squats 600 pounds. He benches well over 300 pounds. When he sees pay dirt, when he sees green, he is going to the rack. And that's what kind of separates him from the pack. He always finds a way to score those big time goals when Virginia needs it. He's more than just a face off specialist. He is a bowling ball with a cannon. So tough, too. I mean, th this guy is not healthy. Like, we've seen him knocked around. We've seen a sling him. earlier yes. this year. It doesn't matter. He's just built differently. Doesn't miss games. Probably shouldn't have played against Quinnipiac last weekend in a game that, frankly, they didn't really need him in that game. But Petey told the coaches, hey, Quinnipiac's faceoff guy is pretty good. I got to be out there. I got to play. When you talk to people about Petey, too, like his love for the weight room and his ability to get after it, that's helped him kind of recover from these injuries because he is jacked up top with muscle. If he was skinnier and he was frail, some of those hits, man, he'd be gone. Lasala well, playing through injury. Matt Moore is a little bit banged up as well. He's got a couple of goals today. Sometimes he's a chef, sometimes he's a sous chef set up for Jackson Burtwistle, who's got three goals. But that play showed me a lot because earlier in the second quarter, remember he did the same move and just went down the alley and scored? So Virginia then supports the matchup, but it's two players that aren't communicating the right way, right? They don't know, should we hedge and show more to Curry? But here, Casey Powell and Rob Cavett, when they had the ball, everyone moved differently because they knew they could get like an elite pass right to them when they're cutting, when those two players had the ball. You always have to be looking at. Yeah. Lasala, can he do it again? This time he sets up more. Schellenberger in Virginia will slow it down a little bit. In class, who's going to be between the pipes, though? That's the question, and maybe it's Thompson. Yeah, this offense will look drastically different next year. But the one player that, that you're not mentioning who has three goals today is Jackson Birdwhistle, and I think he's an interesting piece because all those guys you're mentioning like can make plays on their own, and he doesn't need the ball. Like, you don't want six guys out there that all want the ball. Gotta share the sugar. Here comes Syracuse, off the face-off win. 
bullseye. Don't blink, you'll miss it. Syracuse scores 16 seconds in. So Matt Ward, who won the Tawarton in 2006, we were texting at halftime, and he knows the game super, super well. The one thing he said to me, Virginia's wings need to be better. Well, guess what Syracuse just did? They beat Virginia's wings, and Carter Rice is a wing player for Syracuse. If Petey LaSalle had win, Virginia's been in trouble. Like, he's not getting help from the wings. Carter Rice with his first goal of his career, the true freshman out of Milton, Massachusetts. And there it is, no help from the wing. Fop wins it clean. Can Syracuse do it again? Fop had it, lost it. Sawstad with the pickup for Virginia. I think his stat line that day was like one and four, one goal, four assists. He easily could have had eight assists. To me, you would be hard pressed to find a better passing midfielder in college lacrosse. Like that vision was elite. That had anticipation, that had skill in terms of throwing a dart to the backside. A lot of contact after the faceoff. Syracuse comes out with it. Virginia hounds him on the right. Burt Whistle couldn't pick it up. A lot of Moye lost it. Warren still with it. Saladay has it, 32 in Navy. Oh. Nail on the head court. Who do you put the short sticks on when Virginia has the ball? McIntosh, the sophomore out of Palo Alto. This became, as you see, the 10th Virginia goal scorer. Yeah, you have four to play with, right? So, so you're going to have to put, but, and he still gets Buttermore to bite. He's really good, man. He missed a month earlier this year. He's got five assists over his last three coming into today. Two more helpers and three goals. Look out, Fop lost the head of his stick. That'll be Virginia ball. And Jacob Fop, I feel bad for that stick. The guy's taken 330 straight faceoffs before today, and he's taken every one today. Lasala, give him another one. Face-off specialist? No, sir. This guy's got game. Watch after the shot. He got the little Petey flex. Wins the draw. Gives it to his boy, Danny Parker. Matt Moore knows when 23 in blue sets his feet at the top stage of that restraining box area. It's go time. Timeout, Orange. Petey LaSala with a... In the name of someone who is a, a great influence at Syracuse University for many years. There was a lot of contact at the block. S. Fop and LaSala have been going toe-to-toe -to -toe for years at the X. And it's Virginia ball after Fop leveled Petey. He's got a couple... That's where the versatility will reign supreme with one in blue. He's got options. That might have been two-point range in the PLA. Again, it's Lasala and Fop. Plenty of contact, as always, and it's Virginia ball again. Oops. There's a purpose when you play offense, right? You want to move quicker. You want to move to, to fresh areas on the offensive zone because everyone can get you the rock. You saw Griffin shots now as... 15 minutes of game time between goals for Syracuse. I leave this game thinking that Burt Whistle is a guy that fits into this offense next year. And it's not just because of the four goals, it's how he scored the four goals. They're all assisted. Kennedy, look out. I would think Burt Whistle, so much conflict on an opposing defense for this reason. When you're on the high wing, the five other defenders have to kind of guess, are we going to slide like you're from behind or up top? Because those slide packages change. So the wing is like the no man's land. That's his go-to spot. Yeah, sometimes you show a Jason meeting, you're the next draw. He's coming to play the next game, giving 110%. And he's a team guy. Anyone you talk to, when they hear the name Brendan Curry, like their eyes light up. He's a special young man.
So he's a chef, right? Yes. So you're looking at the I recipe for Brendan too. Curry. I know you do. He's got the speed. He's got the shooting. He's got the passing. I think the secret ingredient and the most important one for him, Park, is what you're talking about, that compete level. Yeah, he loves the game. Syracuse strikes quickly. Ten seconds into the fourth quarter, Brandon Avilas has his first of the day. You want to drum up some offense off the faceoff, right? Jacob Bott straps his way there, wins it himself. Avilas is behind him. And the Virginia defense is just out of sorts. Like, no one's picking Avilas up. They don't want to attack him on the pipe. If we slide to him, Avilas could pass it. Let's see if he can beat him. Meaning, can Avilas beat Nunes? And that time he did. Three straight for Syracuse. Last two of the third quarter and the first one of the fourth. Ten seconds in. Third of the season for Avilas. Petey LaSalle wants a hat trick. Left hand. Don't call him a Fogo, man. Scoring goals, ripping it lefty. You know, we talked about Brandon Curry and the PLL and Matt Moore. The love for the game is a, is a huge, huge piece to all this. Like, if I'm a GM or I'm a coach, I've Connor, to me, has had the best performance today. The most impactful player on the field today has been four in blue. You should be his agent, Carp. You love his game. Yes, he's got another year of college. LaSalle, Moore, down low, bullseye. Patrick for Matt Moore. It's a 20 piece for UVA. His shooting has been amazing. And if you remember in the second quarter, he hammers a couple shots. One went in up top. And from that same release, now he's going low. He was low to high in the first half against the Syracuse goalies. This time he's low to low. So he's playing this is Bobby Gavin in the beginning. Now Harrison Thompson. Looked like he was bowling, like the big Lebowski there. Let it fly. Movie reference for you. There you go. 92nd goal of his career. He's now one away from his dad, Todd. Todd was an incredible player. 1987, multiple time, first team All-American. Most goals ever against Syracuse. This is the 40th all-time meeting. Virginia's going to even up the all-time series today, 2020. It was 5'10 to 5'07 all-time goals. It's not going to be that close after today. Cormier, wow, the passing is a thing of beauty, and Thompson stops up. He gambled a little bit to throw it near side on the off stick of Nunes. That is a, a high-level type of shot in terms of accuracy by the five spot in Jackson Burtwistle who's been a huge bright spot. Avilas already scored today. Somehow emerged from a pack of Wahoos with that ball. Your boy, Clark. That man, along with my father, the, the two most influential people probably in my life. As a coach, he didn't teach me much about the game. He taught me more about life. I ate breakfast with him today. Spent three hours at his kitchen table with him just talking about life.